Hey guys, this is Jimmy. Okay, so the average uh, level of historical understanding possessed by the average person hovers just above literally nothing. As they say, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. People who are totally disinterested in history are actually less dangerous than people who fancy themselves informed, but who really only have a surface level understanding of historical events and historical context. Uh, I'm going to break my normal rules here. I'm going to give you the most topical example of this danger by using a contemporary example. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler is basically the Satan figure of the secular religion that dominates modern Western society. If you ask basically any person to name the most evil man to ever exist, right, you get a couple of Genghis Khans, maybe a couple of Caligulas, a couple of Joseph Stalins or Mao Zedong, Maybe you'd get one or two Oliver Cromwells from better educated people, and then you'd get 9,001 Hitlers. Hitler is the most stereotypically evil human being anyone can think of when put on the spot. It should be a point of great concern, then, that nobody seems to understand how Hitler happened, how the NSDAP happened, how National Socialism in Germany happened. How did the Nazis happen? Well, the easy explanation you'll get will come in one of three narratives. Narrative A, Adolf Hitler hated Jews because he hated matzah or something, and Adolf Hitler convinced 30 million Germans that matzah was the root of all evil, so they joined the Nazi party to kill all the Jews. Okay, that's narrative A. Narrative B, Weimar Germany was really shitty, and Adolf Hitler promised an end to the shittiness and blamed it all on the Jews, so the German people fell for it and joined the Nazi party to kill all the Jews. Okay, narrative C, the German people were really bad butthurt about losing World War I, and Hitler blamed the Jews for losing World War I, and this allowed him to sway the people into electing him to restore German honor and kill all the Jews, and then start another world war which they would win. The problem is, all of these are accurate to a degree, but none of them actually describe the series of events in its entirety. Propagating these ideas obfuscates the most important elements of Hitler's rise to power. By obfuscating that element in education, you create a generation of people who think they understand how totalitarians rise to power, but they actually don't understand. This is a very significant problem, and it needs to be addressed because we now live in a time of endless political polarization and total cultural nihilism. And it's actually entirely possible that in our lifetimes, one or more major geopolitical entities will see the rise of seriously pathological governments. I am not talking about John Oliver, two scoops, Donald Trump pathological. That's a meme. That's ind indicative of a hysterical media apparatus. It's not reality. I'm talking about the real thing. right? I'm talking about gas chambers and concentration camps. The way you prevent the real thing from happening is very, very different from what you have probably been told throughout your life. Let's go on a little journey into history. Let's, let's have a little trip back into the past. Jimmy's going to sing you a story. Let's jump back to 1928, German elections. What do you think the political landscape looks like in 1928? Well, there's a bunch of parties. Germany's a parliamentary system. No single or not even any two parties hold total control of the country. The ruling party is the SDP, the Social Democratic Party, which has about 150 seats. Uh, then there's the DMVP, uh, which is a far-right monarchist party which, with 73 seats. They want to restore the Kaiser or something. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Center Party has 61 seats. Then there's the Communist Party, the KPD, the Communist Party Deutschland, which has 54 seats. Then there's this little party called the NSDAP, or the National Socialist German Workers' Party. It has 12 seats. 12. This puts them uh, under 3% of the total seats in government. At this point, the NSDAP, the Nazis, they're about as relevant as uh, Jill Stein is in the United States presently. The NSDAP has less power than the Green Party. But something happens between 1928 and 1930, and in the 1930 German elections, the KPD gains another 23 seats, but something else happens too. The NSDAP jumps from being an irrelevant fringe party to the second largest party in the country. The NSDAP under Adolf Hitler gains 95 seats in one election, catapulting past the KPD, the DNVP, the DDP. Basically, it remains second only to the SPD at 107 seats, the SPD's 143. The SPD is hemorrhaging power. How did this happen? What, what, what did Hitler just convince 30 million people that he was suddenly right for the job? No, well, it was more like 6 million. But uh, the answer is actually pretty simple. 
the KBD, <laughs> the KPD happened. See, at this time, the Soviet Union was rapidly expanding in influence and size. The communist sympathies in Germany were at an all-time high. The problem is that most people fucking hated communists. There was zero common ground between any of the liberal parties, monarchist parties, Christian parties, uh, or even the cultural parties like the v Bavarian People's Party and the KPD. The KPD wanted to join the common turn. I mean, that, that, there's no common ground there. But all of those parties did have something in common between themselves and the NSDAP. They all hated communists. Very quickly, the party with the most hardline stance on communism absorbed the votes of the other parties. And this was, unsurprisingly, the NSDAP, which was led by Adolf Hitler, who, and this is something we never talk about, who appealed uh, to the public, not just by preaching anti-Semitism. I mean, that's low-hanging fruit at the time. No, his main platform was anti-communism. Hitler's meteoric rise to power correlates precisely with the, KDP, with the KPD's ascent. Ah, oh, God, I, I, can, I always get these acronyms confused. But anyway, it's by no means guaranteed that the NSDAP is going to take power. They're still a fringe party. Most people disagree with them fundamentally on almost everything. But then the worst thing possible happens. Anti-fascism. A series of paramilitary groups, including the Red Front, Anti-Fascist Action, others, are activated, primarily as unofficial arms of the KPD, in response to the NSDAP's gains and powers. The SA, or the Sturmau Battalion, Storm Battalion, uh, basically Hitler's goon squad, led by Ernst Röhm. Uh, if, if you have ever watched Jeeves and Wooster, um, Roderick Spode and his uh, uh, brown shorts or whatever, are a, a parody of the, of the SA. Anyway, these guys had historically been a largely ineffectual force, um, best known for getting wrecked by the police and running away whenever they were confronted with serious opposition. But from 1931 onwards, the situation rapidly reverses itself. Suddenly, the SA is not just a bunch of goofballs in brown shirts led by some homo with a dueling scar. The German public has eyes. They look out of their windows. They see armed communists running around lighting buildings on fire and attacking people with bats. These hooligans are then countered by another group of hooligans, the SA, except those hooligans are wearing uniforms. They aren't calling for a communist revolution. They aren't calling for Germany to join the Comintern. They're just saying, we hate communists. I don't need to tell you what happened next. At one point, Hitler said that his rise to power could have been interrupted if his enemies had just stopped him early. They could have done it, but they were too slow to act. I disagree with this assessment. I suspect that Hitler himself did not understand how he had actually come to power. He thought it was because his rhetoric and his powers of persuasion were so great. He thought that he was preaching the truth and that only an assassin's knife could have stopped him from rising to power. Now, if you agree with this assess assessment, you're basically saying that Hitler was right. So let's consider another possibility that doesn't involve Hitler being right. Here's my assessment. Let's consider that Adolf Hitler was a reactionary leader. He rose to power because the public saw the alternative to Hitler's rise to power as being worse than anything that Hitler could possibly have done. The German people were not an agriculturally independent nation. They wouldn't be an agriculturally independent nation for 40 years after World War II, mid-1980s. You can imagine that communism, which had a track record already of massive starvation as a result of inept administration policies, wasn't looking like a super cool idea to the German people at the time. And the added addition of uh, added addition of paramilitary communists rampaging through the streets of Frankfurt didn't fucking help. This is the historical lesson of the day, and I beg you, I beg you with tears in my eyes, fucking listen to me, because I'm only going to say it once. Fascism is a reactionary movement. The public does not and will not support fascists in any country unless they are afraid of the alternative. The alternative to which fascism has always risen, in every instance, has been hard left communist or socialist movements that begin to commit political violence. You need to digest this immediately because we are entering a dangerous couple of decades. And if you don't listen to me, you're going to regret it. I'm having a real case of Cassandra syndrome here, and I don't feel good about it. But this is the kind of shit I'm talking about. History isn't simple. Villains don't just pop out of the woodwork and take control out of nowhere, particularly not in democratic societies. The public always wants stability first, 
and everything else a distant second. If you promise them stability, they will support you. If you promise them discord and rapid change, they will only support you if their material situations are so terrible presently that literally anything is a feasible alternative. So bear this in mind and heed this warning, because a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. If you think that the solution to your political quibbles is to go and get a bike lock and put on a mask and attack people, or drive a car into a bunch of people, or shoot up some kids who disagree with you, stop right now. Go put your copy of Mein Kampf or the Communist Manifesto away. Go add Reddit to a block list on your computer. Go post some CP on polls so that you get permabanned and never fucking think about politics again because you are the reason that we get pathological governments and i have better shit to do than write song of swords from inside a concentration camp because you couldn't watch an episode of stranger things instead of going and committing political violence for your retarded ideology <sighs> next time we'll cover the dark ages this is jimbo signing out